Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the financial statements. We're going to be looking at the relationship between the financial statements. We're going to focus on the income statement, otherwise known as the statement of comprehensive income, the balance sheet, otherwise known as the statement of financial position, and the statement of cash flows or the cash flow statement. We're going to be looking at them, and I'll show you an example of how they look, the formats, as well as the relationship between all these financial statements. And it will help you thoroughly understand how the financial statements work and also help you in advancing how you prepare these financial statements and how they relate to one another when you're preparing them. So what are these financial statements and what do they mean? Well, the statement of comprehensive income, otherwise known as the income statement, is a statement that shows the change in the net assets or the equity of the entity. It shows you that. It shows the financial performance of the company over a specific period. And that is income earned and expenses incurred. So we know this when we look at the income statement. We see what the income is and what the expenses are. I highlighted in red here the financial performance of the company over a specific period. So you're looking at how the company performed or how the entity performed over a specific period of time. Usually in 12 months time, how it performed, okay, over a year's time. But you can do this even over a shorter period of time. So that is the statement of comprehensive income. And here I also wrote income earned and expenses incurred. Very important for us to take note of this. It's income earned and expenses incurred. So it's, just, it's not just any income. It's the one which is earned and the one which is incurred. The second one is the statement of financial position or the balance sheet, which is a statement that shows an entity's financial position at a given point in time. And what I wrote there in brackets is it's a snapshot. It gives you a picture at a specific point in time what it looks like. And what do we see in the statement of financial position or the balance sheet? We see what the assets are, the equity, and the liabilities of the entity. Okay, so we are able to see that at a specific point in time. Now, you can see the differences between the income statement and the balance sheet. Okay, and you can see I've highlighted them in red. The income statement is the financial performance of a specific period, okay, over a period of time. The balance sheet or the statement of financial position is a snapshot, okay, the financial position at a given point in time. So usually when you see the statement of financial position for the year ended, let's say 28 February 2020, what you're seeing there is that what the assets the company has, what the equity the company has, and what the liabilities the company has at that specific point in time, at the 28th of February 2020, like I gave the example. But when you look at the statement of comprehensive income for the same period, at the as at the end of 28 February 2020, you are looking at 12 months preceding that period, okay? So you're looking from the 1st of March 2019 to the 28th of February 2020, okay? And that is the difference between the two. The income statement gives you over a specific period of time. The statement of financial position gives you at that specific point in time what the assets, equity, and liabilities of the company are. So if there's something you remember between these two statements or between the income statement and the balance sheet, you remember that the statement of comprehensive income shows you the financial performance over a specific period okay but the balance sheet gives you a snapshot gives you the financial position of the entity at a specific period okay at a specific period it's not over a period of time but at a specific period the last one we're looking at here is a statement of cash flows or the cash flow statement this is a statement that shows an entity's movement in cash over a specific period in time okay it shows you the movement in cash in the entity over a specific period of time now here the statement of cash, cash flows strictly looks at the cash movement it does not deal with other aspects of the statements okay it does not deal with what the income statement will have non-cash items for instance it does not look at what the statement of financial position which we do have which is non-cash items as well like the receivables accounts receivables or debtors okay the amount that you are owed by the debtors or the people that you sold to on credit doesn't look at that it looks at what is the cash what cash did we have at the beginning and what cash do we have now at the end what were the movement what caused the cash that moved from the beginning to now what we have at the end okay how did we come from what we have at the beginning and what we have at the end so it's looking at the cash movement over a specific period of time so just like the income statement where it gives you the financial performance of the company over a specific period of time, the statement of cash flow shows you the movement of cash over a specific period of time. Now, let's continue with this one here. Let's highlight it even further. 
the statement of financial position or the balance sheet and the statement of comprehensive income or the income statement are completed based on the accrual principle which means that income and expenses from which profits are computed are recognized when they are earned and incurred respectively okay and that is what we mentioned the statement of financial position and the statement of comprehensive income are completed based on the accrual principle now we've looked at the accrual principle in our other lessons where we showed you how accruals work how it affects the statement of financial position as well as how it affects the statement of comprehensive income we looked at them when we were completing these two statements in great detail and we'll leave the links to those lessons in the description below but what we're saying here is that it's completed based on the accrual basis okay when income is earned and when expenses are incurred okay and income can be earned but there's no movement of cash okay i can earn an income from my customer but he has not paid me yet okay but the income statement or the statement of comprehensive income will recognize that income and if i have not been paid the statement of financial position will recognize that i have not been paid that income as well okay so they work on the accrual principle therefore it is rare that the net profit that you find in the statement of comprehensive income is the same as the cash balance as reflected in the statement of financial position okay and remember in the statement of financial position we have a cash balance at a, at a specific period of time which is usually at the end of the period okay so the net profit that you have there is not necessarily the cash that the company has extremely rare for you to find that because of the accrual issues and also non-cash elements that are affected in the statement of comprehensive income and the statement of financial position it is for this purpose that the cash flow statement is prepared it is prepared by taking the latest two statement of financial position which is the current year and the prior year of the statement of financial position and the statement of com comprehensive income that covers that period now we have completed the statement of cash flows before we have done that and we showed you how we take the statement of comprehensive income and the statement of financial position to complete the statement of cash flows but that's what we are saying when we're completing the statement of cash flows we are looking at the statement of financial position for the prior year and for this year and the statement of comprehensive income for this year okay and we are looking at them and we are now trying to reconcile how cash is affected with these two accounts to come and see how much cash did we have at the beginning and how much cash do we have now and what were the movements okay to reconcile the two now let's look at this the format of the three statements that you've been looking at the statement of comprehensive income the statement of financial position and the statement of cash flows the first one you're looking at here is the statement of comprehensive income you can see here this is a completed statement of comprehensive income you have revenues or sales you have direct costs or what is otherwise known as the cost of goods sold or the cost of sales and then you have gross profits you have profit on sale of assets and then you have operating expenses and it's all detailed down here and then you have operating profit down here and then you have depreciation your finance cost you have profit before tax or ebt which is earnings before tax as well and then you have the income tax expense and then you have net profit at the end Obviously, the preparation of the statement of comprehensive income might be different from one entity to another, okay? Others may put the depreciation together with the operating expenses, or they might put the finance cost together with the operating expenses, okay? And we have explained those, those details before, okay? The difference between the earnings before interest and tax and operating profit and such and such details. But what I want you to focus on here is that your statement of comprehensive income details all your incomes like your revenues like your profit on the sale of an asset like your interest income if you have and it also details all your expenses and remember it must be expenses which are incurred and it must be income which is earned and this is the statement of comprehensive income and another one here is the statement of financial position which is pretty standard for most companies okay most of them would look more similar than the statement of comprehensive income okay statement of financial position like we said it shows you what the assets of the company are okay what the equity of the company are and then what the liabilities of the company are okay it shows you at a specific point in time and you can see it's written statement of financial position for the year ended 28 february 2018 it's showing you the assets the equity and the liabilities of the company at this specific day 28 february 2018 so it's just a snapshot showing you what assets what equity and li what liabilities the company has and the last one here is the statement of cash flows which now details the movement from the profits that we have in the profits that are detailed in the statement of comprehensive income and we take into account 
all the other non-cash items as well as the accruals and we take that into account and we're trying to see what is the actual movement in cash and strictly cash alone and this statement of cash flows is prepared in the indirect method okay and we've done that you'll find the link in the description below you can do it the direct method method and the indirect method but here this one is indirect you can see we're taking the profits of the company the net profit 2736 and we're making adjustments for non-cash items and we know that depreciation is a non-cash item profit on sale of assets is a non-cash item and we're also taking into account other elements but one arrive at the cash the cash that was generated this year the cash that we had at the beginning and the balance that we have at the end now let's look at the relationship between the three financial statements the statement of cash flows the statement of financial position and the statement of comprehensive income let's first look at the connection between the statement of comprehensive income and the statement of financial position here what do you note as the relationship between the two well the first thing that you note here is that the net profit in simplistic terms will be taken to the equity section of the statement of financial position and that is why we said it's the change in the net assets of the company okay in the net assets of the company so what does it mean we just take the net profit and we take it to retained earnings or accumulated profits or loss for the company and you can see the same amount goes into the statement of financial position okay the amount from the income statement goes into the statement of financial position obviously there may be other elements when you're doing an advanced statement of comprehensive income for instance or for a real company you'll see that it doesn't end with net profit they first pay like preference dividends and they will pay the ordinary dividends and then whatever cash they decide to retain in the company they take it to the equity section of the statement of financial position so i'm just showing you the connection between the statement of comprehensive income and the statement of financial position another connection that we see here is the depreciation okay you can see here we have depreciation in the statement of comprehensive income and what do we do with that depreciation we take it and it affects all your non-current assets okay your usual non-current assets and i'm talking about land buildings motor vehicles furniture and fittings computers and other assets that you may have that needs to be depreciated that are usually depreciated obviously land is not usually depreciated but what does this mean it means that we take the depreciation for this specific period and they deduct they reduce our non-current assets like your buildings your motor vehicles and so forth okay so this depreciation is added to the depreciation that we've had before for these specific items and it becomes accumulated depreciation okay we're adding the depreciation we're taking the depreciation for them from the income statement and taking the statement of financial position there is the connection between the income statement and the balance sheet now here's a note any expense that appears on the statement of comprehensive income and not yet paid will appear on the statement of financial position and that is why i mentioned the words income earned and expenses incurred okay and i say here if an expense that appears in the statement of comprehensive income has not been paid by you yet to whoever you owe it will appear on the statement of financial position okay it will appear on your liabilities and the same thing happens with the income if you have income that you have not been paid yet okay you have earned this income but you have not been paid it will also appear in the statement of financial position okay in the assets section so you can see it can appear in the statement of comprehensive income and it will also appear in the statement of financial position due to accrual basis that we mentioned and we've done the lessons on that as well like i said you can find the lessons on those ones in the links in the description below now let's look at the connection between the statement of comprehensive income or the income statement and the cash flow statement on the left we still have our income statement on the right we have our cash flow statement okay and what is the relationship between these two well the first thing that you note there is that the net profit okay and this is the like i said the indirect method of completing the cash flow statement okay so you can see that the net profit that we have in the income statement goes directly and it's the first item in the statement of cash flows okay so we just take the net profit and we put it in the statement of cash flows that's the first item now you can see the connection between the two and another thing that you see here is the depreciation remember depreciation is a non-cash item so we take the depreciation from the income statement or the statement of comprehensive income and it goes directly to the statement of cash flows and we're adding it we're putting it as a positive in the statement of cash flows while in the statement of comprehensive income or the income statement it's a negative okay and you will understand this if you go through the lessons where we completed the statement of cash flows and those are the relationships between the income statement 
and the statement of cash flows. Now let's look at the last one, the relationship between the statement of financial position or the balance sheet with the statement of cash flows or the cash flow statement. What is the relationship between these two? Well, let's look at the first one here. You can see that you have your current assets, okay? And you can see here changes in working capital. Like I, again, like I will say, this is the indirect method of completing the cash flow statement. You can see that your current assets, the items from your current assets goes directly and you can see the changes in working capital goes from inventory, which is found in the balance sheet, your receivables, which is also found in the balance sheet, and your payables, which is found in the balance sheet. But it's found here in the current liabilities section. Okay, so you can see the relationship between the two. You will take items from your statement of financial position or from your balance sheet and take it directly to your cash flow statement for you to determine what are the changes in working capital. Another relationship that you see here is that the cash that appears or the bank that appears, the bank balance that appears on the statement of financial position or the balance sheet comes directly from the final balance in your statement of cash flows. You can see here, we have cash generated in during the year. You have the balance that you had at the beginning of the year. If you add the two together, it should give you the balance carried down or the balance at the end. And this balance goes all the way to the statement of financial position under the current assets section. It will either be called cash or it will be called bank, okay? And that is the relationship between your statement of cash flows and the statement of financial position. I hope this lesson has made sense. I hope you have gained value from it. I hope you are seeing the connection between the financial statements, the income statement, the balance sheet, and the statement of cash flows, as well as understanding what these statements stand for and how they look. If you have gained value from this lesson, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and share it to those you think it might help. Till next time, cheers.